Welcome, family, to another edition of Stranger Thinking Media. This is Yesha Yahu, where we bring you the gospel of Yahusha HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, to address the problems of a modern world. So stay tuned. We have an awesome show for you today. Kick back, dig, while we do it to you in 3D. So groovy that I dig me. Here to put a glide in your stride and a dip in your hip. And come on to the mothership. Swing down, sweet chariot, and stop and let me ride. Chariots of fire. Today's agenda, we're going to discuss the Feast of Purim, or lots. Topic one, Esther, fit, feminine, and friendly. Haman, the Agagite. Saul and Agag, king of the Amalekites. Divine deliverance, Amalek defeated. Now in Shushan the palace, there was a certain Jew, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. Now kick back, fam. Got an awesome video for you. Pay close attention. You might learn something. Chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women, and she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And the king gave a great banquet, Esther's banquet, for all his nobles and officials. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the provinces and distributed gifts with royal liberality. She was from the tribe of Benjamin, which is remarkable given the clan's tough history. Mordecai was her cousin, but she had been abandoned as an orphan. He had adopted her as his own daughter. She kept their connection a secret at Mordecai's request because the empire's Jewish populations were in peril. Despite the fact that she was new to the harem, she quickly became the king's favorite wife. We also noticed the position of another man who was exalted in the court at the time as we set the scene. He was known as Haman, and he is the story's antagonist. In the book of Esther, chapter 2, And he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. And the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, her father and mother, were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also into the king's house, to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased the king, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her her things for purifications, with such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens which were meet to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. And so here you see Esther is a type of the church, the set-apart ones, and King Ahasuerus is a type of Christ. This is all symbolic and prophetic. We also noticed the position of another man who was exalted in the court at the time as we set the scene. He was known as Haman, and he is the story's antagonist. We have a fascinating situation. The queen of the Persian Empire is a Jewess who hasn't acknowledged that she is a Jewess, and Haman is a high-ranking courtier who despises all Jews. When Haman insisted that everyone worship the emperor, it became a flashpoint. When Mordecai refused, Haman informed the king. He stressed that the empire's Jews should be completely exterminated. They were distinct with their own set of laws, traditions, and religion. They were misfits who needed to be let go. He also offered the treasury a hefty reward if the monarch agreed to exterminate the Jews. They literally drew lots to determine when all the Jews would be executed in secret. The extinction of the Jewish people was decided by a lot cast on the 13th day of the month. One of the reasons why the 13th day has always been associated with superstition is because of this. When the Jews found out what was going to happen, they fasted, wore sackcloth, and wore ashes. Mordecai sent Esther a message begging the king for mercy. He claimed that God had brought her to the kingdom for a specific reason. She became queen as a result of an unusual series of events and was thus in a position to assist her people. So Esther faced a real battle. Should she reveal that she was Jewish? 
If she did, her life would be at stake too. But she decided that if she perished, she perished. So how was she to make the request known? Esther chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the hall, facing the entrance. When he saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was pleased with her and held out to her the gold scepter that was in his hand. So Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. Then the king asked, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be given you. If it pleases the king, replied Esther, let the king, together with Haman, come today to a banquet I have prepared for him. Bring Haman at once, the king said, so that we may do what Esther asks. So the king and Haman went to the banquet Esther had prepared. As they were drinking wine, the king again asked Esther, Now what is your petition? It will be given you. And what is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. Esther replied, My petition and my request is this. If the king regards me with favor, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, let the king and Haman come tomorrow to the banquet I will prepare for them. Then I will answer the king's question. The queen could only see the king if she was summoned, but she knew she had to see him. So she boldly requested his presence and proposed a banquet with Haman as the honored guest. The king granted the request and the meal was properly set up. Esther chapter 5 verse 9 Haman went out that day happy and in high spirits. But when he saw Mordecai at the king's gate and observed that he neither rose nor showed fear in his presence, he was filled with rage against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. Calling together his friends and Zeresh, his wife, Haman boasted to them about his vast wealth, his many sons, and all the ways the king had honored him and how he had elevated him above the other nobles and officials. And that's not all, Haman said. I'm the only person Queen Esther invited to accompany the king to the banquet she gave, and she has invited me along with the king tomorrow. But all this gives me no satisfaction as long as I see that Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. His wife Zeresh and all his friends said to him, Have a pole set up reaching to a height of fifty cubits, and ask the king in the morning to have Mordecai impaled on it. Then go with the king to the banquet and enjoy yourself. This suggested delighted Haman, and he had the pole set up. The Book of Esther, Chapter 3. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the Jews' enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as seemeth good to thee. So he was being funded to annihilate the Jews. The king not being aware that his favorite bride, his wife, is a Jew. For Haman, a Macedonian, the son of Hamadatha, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood, I point this out because Haman is an Agagite, but he's from Macedonia, and that's key because the book of Jasher discusses this. Amalek being the grandson of Esau. Amalek was taken and moved into Macedonia when they lost at war in a battle to the Kittimites, who are the people of Macedonia. So that confirms the story of Jasher, that Esau was removed into Europe amongst the Macedonians. Samuel. Greetings. Stop. I'll tell you what God has said. Say on. When you were little, in your own eyes, were you not made king of all Israel? I was. And all God asked was that you obey his commands. Instead, you're as rebellious as some heathen witch. You reject the Lord. Now, he'll reject you and your kingdom. Samuel, if I've sinned, it was to feed my army. All right. All right, I've sinned. Samuel, help me. Please help me. Help me make this right with God. 
Together. Together we'll make a burnt offering. God cares about burnt offerings. What does he care that his servant obey his word? You cannot bargain with the God of Israel. As your sword has made women childless, so shall your mother be childless. We hope this presentation has been enlightening and helpful to you. If you support the gospel and spreading of the truth, we ask you to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video. Also, hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date. Now back to the show. So in the book of Exodus, just to give you some background here, And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Yahshua, or Yahusha. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Yah is mad at Amalek. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Yahweh Nisi. For he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So Yahuwah, the great, the great mighty one, the creator of heaven and earth, has focused on a specific people. And he is angry with them. So when we think of Yah, Yah doesn't, he's love, he's, he's love, he's all love. He doesn't hate, he doesn't hate. No, he, he's angry at these people for what they did. First Samuel chapter 10. And ye have this day rejected your God, meaning the children of Israel, who himself saved you out of all of your adversaries and your tribulations. And you have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. And when Samuel had, caused, had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was taken, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second. Saul is the son of Kish. But as we mentioned earlier, Mordecai was descended from Kish, also a Benjamite. There's going to be an act of redemption for the house of Saul here, sort of. But let's continue. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Samuel also said unto Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto his voice of his words of the Lord of Yahuwah. Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid in wait for him in the way when he came up out of Egypt. Ah, so that's why Yah is angry with Amalek, because Amalek smote the hind parts of the troop. And who was lagging behind in the troops of Israel as they were coming out of Egypt? The old people and little children who couldn't keep up. And Amalek laid in wait, and he started assassinating them. And Moses never forgot that. Yahuwah never forgot that. And there's a perpetual hatred towards these people from the Most High. And if you're one of those people today, you have a judgment coming. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. That is pretty thorough anger there. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 7. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, that sounds familiar, the king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag. Bad move. And the best of the sheep and the oxen and of the fatlings and the, and the lambs and all that was good and, and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refuse, that they destroyed. And of course, Saul, if you, if you remember the video, he said, oh, well, the men were hungry, so, you know, I, we had to take that food. And, and, and. So he disobeyed God's command to slaughter everything that breathed in that camp. 
And even worse, he buddies up with Agag, king of the Amalekites. Esther summoned the strength to speak to the king about her people at the feast. When the king learned of Haman's heinous plot, he ordered Haman to be executed on his own gallows, and the Jews were saved. Esther chapter 7, verses 1 through 8. So the king and Haman went to Queen Esther's banquet, and as they were drinking wine on the second day, the king again asked, Queen Esther, what is your petition? It will be given you. What is your request? Even up to half the kingdom, it will be granted. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life, this is my petition. And spare my people, this is my request. For I and my people have been sold to be destroyed, killed, and annihilated. If we had merely been sold as male and female slaves, I would have kept quiet, because no such distress would justify disturbing the king. King Xerxes asked Queen Esther, Who is he? Where is he, the man who has dared to do such a thing? Esther said, An adversary and enemy, this vile Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and queen. The king got up in a rage, left his wine, and went out into the palace garden. But Haman, realizing that the king had already decided his fate, stayed behind to beg Queen Esther for his life. Just as the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall, Haman was falling on the couch where Esther was reclining. The king exclaimed, Will he even molest the queen while she is with me in the house? As soon as the word left the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. A fresh decree was issued, overriding Haman's orders and granting the Jews the right to defend themselves as well as the ability to gather and annihilate any armed force that could attack them. It was a stunning intervention because assassins were waiting to slaughter all the Jews across the empire. As a result, when the time came for Haman's edict to eliminate the Jews, the Jews were prepared and proceeded to overpower their opponents and execute Haman's family. Esther chapter 8 Wherein the king granted the Jews which were in every city to gather themselves together and to stand for their lives, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Upon one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, namely upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar. So, as you can see, if you can see the types involved, Ahasuerus is a type of the returning Messiah, and the woman Esther is a type of his set-apart ones, the chosen of Yasharel, Israel, and those Gentiles, of course, that had attached themselves to Israel to call, to form what we call, I, I tend to not like to use the term church, but for lack of a better term, the church. And... Remember in the book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ how the dragon sends a flood after the after the uh, the woman, but the earth swallows it up, much like Ahasuerus, his decree swallows up the swallows up the malice of Haman, and turns it completely around to where the children of Israel, in this case the tribe of Benjamin and, and Judah are able to turn the tide at the decree of the great king and actually slaughter their enemies. And for fear of the Jews, many became Jews. Almost symbolic of what's going to happen in the kingdom age. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, hearken Thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord, thus saith the Lord of hosts. I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid in wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman and infant and suckling ox and sheep, camel and ass. God's anger towards the Amalekites. Esther chapter 8, the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor, and in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day, and many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them.
Well, farewell family. I love you so much. Thank you so much for continually supporting my content. If you did enjoy this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell and share this with your friends and family. I'm sure they would find it interesting as well. I'm very excited to continue this journey with you. I thank you all for bringing certain stories to my attention and for continually keeping me updated with certain events around the world. I very much appreciate you all. Shout out to the channel members. May everybody have a beautiful and blessed day who's in the body of Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. And I'll see you on the next video. Shalom.